So in the morning, uh, we have seen the step by step procedure of uh, matrix stiffness method or matrix displacement method, okay, uh, in which uh, the steps we we'll just recall the steps. First step is to form the static matrix, okay, to form the static matrix. So to form the static matrix, we need to draw the external joint moment rotation diagram, okay, external joint moment rotation diagram, and then we need to draw the internal joint moment rotation diagram. Compare these two. Okay, compare these two uh, to get the static matrix A. Okay, comparing this with waiting matrix A. And step two will be forming transpose. Okay, transpose of A matrix. So we need to form the transpose. So you know how to form transpose. It is nothing but transforming the rows into columns. Columns into rows. Okay. And step three will be element stiffness matrix. The element stiffness matrix general format is 4 EA by L, 2 EA by L, 2 EA by L, and 4 EA by L for any member. For one member. If you have two members, it will be a 4 by 4 matrix. If you have three members, it will be 6 by 6 matrix. Okay. And the next step will be to form structure stiffness matrix. So structure stiffness matrix will be capital K. So capital K equal to AKA transpose. And we know we already have A in the first step and K in the third step. Oh, so now can sir, whether your screen is uh, shared, uh, I'll share sir. One. Just will uh, just recall yes, and then I'll share. Okay, sir. So, so share the screen. Screen visible. Yes, sir. Oh. So this one we have been seeing the morning. So the steps just just we are recalling now. Okay. So first step, as I told, uh, static matrix. So we 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 have seen how to form the static matrix because the way we are recalling again is the same steps will be followed uh, in the trust as well the portal frame analysis also okay so we need to become a setup just we recall quickly so px diagram fe diagram comparing px and fe diagram we will be getting the uh, static matrix a so once we get static static matrix we need to form a transpose so by transforming those into columns we'll get a transpose then to form the element stiffness matrix so as I said, if you have two members, the element stiffness matrix will be a uh, four by four matrix. A four by four matrix. If it is a three number, if, are, if you have three members, then six by six matrix. Okay. Uh, so you need to substitute the appropriate I value and span and get the uh, matrix. So you can take E as common term and you can get the small k. One small k is applied, you can get the uh, structure stiffness matrix. That is being assembling the elements, the assembly of the elements. So this is given by capital A into small k into A transpose. So for this first we need to form K transpose. Okay. So K obtained in the third step, A transpose obtained in the second step will be made use of here. And first we need to multiply that and then we need to multiply by A, pre-multiply by A. And then we need to form the inverse of the K matrix. So inverse, we know how to form uh, in case of uh, two by two matrix as well case of 3 by 3 matrix. In case of 2 by 2 matrix, it will be very easier. That is, we take the leading diagonal, change the position of the diagonal elements, and in the other diagonal, change the sign of the diagonal elements. Okay? And 1 by determinant will be there. 1 by determinant of adjoint K. Adjoint K is nothing but a transpose of cofactor matrix. Okay? So, in case of the 3 by 3 matrix, 1 by determinant into adjoint K. Adjoint K can be found, formed by uh, the cofactor matrix, say like A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, A3, B3, C3. That is capital A1, capital B1, capital C1, capital A2, capital B2, capital C2, etc. Yeah, we have also seen numerical examples based on that. So that we have understood clearly how to form the uh, cofactor matrix. Okay. So adjoint K will be transpose of the cofactor matrix. So which will be A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, and C1, C2, B3. And determinant will be small a1 capital a1 plus small b1 capital b1 plus small c1 capital c1. So that way we're getting k inverse. And to form the uh, matrix P, that is step 6, we need to have the 
fixer and moments. So fixer and moments have to be found for the given type of uh, loading. Okay, so for any type of loading, we need to find the fixer and moments. So mark the fixer and moments on the fixer beam. Then mark the P diagram. So compare at B. What is you have? What is the value of P one we have? So P one equal to minus of sum of fixer and moment. Okay, so in general, P is equal to minus of sum of fixer and moment. So P one will be equal to minus of fixer and moment at B and B C. P two will be equal to fixer and moment at C B. Then uh, we need to form capital X. Capital X is equal to K inverse into P. So K inverse we obtain in the step five. P we have formed in the step six. So K inverse P we will getting capital X. Then we need to form F matrix. So F matrix equal to K transpose into X. So this will give the internal joint uh, moments. So once you get the internal joint moment, you will be getting the final moments by M of A B plus F one, M of B A plus F two. M of B C plus F three, M of C D plus F four, etc. Okay. So the same technique will be uh, used in case of portal frame also. I tell you how to do portal frame. Do you see the whiteboard? Yes, sir. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Say we have a portal frame like this. Okay. Say it may be subjected to UDL, subjected to UDL or any load. Okay. So the first step is to form the static matrix. So to form the static matrix, we need to draw the PX diagram. Okay. So if you if you consider this portal frame, if you consider this portal frame, A is fixed, so we can leave the fixed support. This is B. So here I will be marking one external giant moment rotation. So this will be my P1 X1. Okay. Here uh, this will be continuous. So here I will be having one rotation. So this will be my P two X two. Okay, yeah, this is the P X diagram for in case of portal frame. Because portal frame also in, we need to uh, teach to our uh, students. Okay, so just the the steps how we can just to compare how we are applying the steps which we have learned to a portal frame also. Okay, same steps only. So first step is always forming the static matrix. To form the static matrix, the first step is to draw the PX diagram. PX diagram is nothing but the external joint moment rotation diagram. So to draw the external joint moment rotation diagram, leave the fixed support. Leave the fixed support. At all other supports, you need to mark the external joint moment and rotation, and then write what is P1. So P1 is external joint moment. Capital X1 is external joint rotation. P2 is external joint moment at uh, uh, C. X2 is external joint rotation at C. Okay, like this is the PX diagram. Then FE diagram. Okay, FE diagram. So what is the rule for FE diagram? What is the rule we studied in case of beams? I told I told on the equation or the rule like thing to draw FE diagram. To draw FE diagram. We need to all the members. That is, all the members will have internal joint moment and rotation at their ends. Okay, at their ends. So here I'll be having one internal joint uh, moment rotation. Okay. Similarly, here I'll be having uh, one internal joint moment rotation. So here I'll be having one internal joint moment rotation. Here I, I'll be having one internal joint moment rotation. Similarly, for this member at the ends, and I am assuming all moments is clockwise. Okay, so here I will be writing as this as F1 E1. Okay, sorry, 
So F to E two. F to E two, and this is F three E three. Three E three. So this is F four E four. This is F four. You, you please work out this in your uh, sheet if you have. Please draw this diagram. We are going to practice. Okay. This is F five E five, and this is F six E six. So to draw the uh, F E diagram, okay. To draw the F E diagram, uh, all the numbers will have internal joint moment rotation at their ends. Therefore, say this is actually this is A end A. This is end B. And this is C, this is C, and this is D. Similarly, in the PX diagram, this is A, this is B, and this is C and D. Okay. So, uh, can you uh, tell me the relationship between uh, P and F at B? At B, the action, sum of external joint moment, uh, external joint moment should be equal to sum of internal joint moment. So can you tell me this equation? Any one of you at B, what will be the value of P one? F two plus F three. Very good. Uh, it is similar to B minus only. Okay. So P one equal to here. I have F two, F three. So F two plus F three. So I can write P one equal to F two plus F three. So what will be P two? F three F four sir, F three plus F four. No. See here we have F two F three here F four F five so F four plus F five. Okay. See in this number okay. I have F one F two here I have F three F four here I have F five F six so F two F three for P one and F four F five for P two. Okay. Is it clear or not? Clear, sir. So you need to write uh, P one. Okay, P one equal to F two plus F three. Okay, and P two will be equal to a small actually capital letter. You need to write P two equal to F four plus plus F five. Okay, so can you tell me the A matrix? Please try forming the A matrix and tell me static matrix. I want static matrix from this relationship. So to do that, we can we need to expand this. So I can write P1 equal to F1 into 0 plus F2 into 1 plus F3 into 1 plus F4 into 0 plus F5 into 0 plus F6 into 0. P2 can be written as F1 into 0 plus F2 into 0 plus F3 into 0 plus F4 into 1 plus F5 into 1 plus F6 into 0. Therefore, I can relate P1, P2, or matrix on left side equal to the coefficients multiplied by F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6. So, what is the A matrix we get? Please tell me. Matrix, please tell me and see whether you get this. Whether you get zero, one, one, zero, 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 sorry, zero, zero. This will be our A matrix. Is it correct? Have anyone of you tried this? Static matrix will be zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero. This will be the static matrix. So how did we get this static matrix? I'll explain. So first, draw the PX diagram. So here P1 X1, here P2 X2, 
and f f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 f6 because each member will have internal joint moment rotation at their ends at the end a at the end b i will have similarly in bc at the end b at c i will have similarly at the cd at the end c and at the end d i will have the internal, uh, external joint uh, internal joint moment and rotation external joint moment will be other than fixed support only having external joint moment so p1 will be equal to f2 plus f3 p2 will be equal to f5 plus f6 okay f5 plus f6 sorry f4 plus f5 sorry f4 plus f5 f6 is here so f4 plus f5 therefore uh, p1 p2 equal to 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 multiplied by f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 f6 therefore this is our static matrix okay do you have any doubt in this so analysis of portal frames is similar to analysis of continuous beams that's why i wanted to explain you example so after forming a what is the next step A transpose. A transpose. So can we form A transpose? 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Will be, uh, it's a transform row into columns. That's all. First row make it as a column. Second row make it as a column. Second column. So A transpose. So what will be the third step? We have been studying from the morning. So please tell me what is the third step? Element stiffness matrix. Sir. Okay. So, what will be the size of element stiffness matrix? What will be the size of element stiffness matrix? Six by six, sir. Six by six. Very good. Because we have three members, so the stiffness matrix will be a six by six matrix. So, four e i one by l one, two e i one by l one, two e i one by l one, four e i one by l one. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Okay, then uh, next diagonal. 4E I2 by L2, 2E I2 by L2, 2E I2 by L2, 4E I2 by L2. Then the other thing is 0. Then last diagonal. 4E I3 by L3, 2E I3 by L3, 2E I3 by L3, 4E I3 by L3. So we can easily form the element stiffness matrix. Say this is nothing but a portal frame is nothing but just see expanding the form of a beam. Okay, if I expand this column, similarly expand this side. So it will be equivalent to a uh, continuous beam. Okay, so nothing different. We are doing the same procedure for as we did for continuous beam. Same procedure. We draw the PX diagram, draw the uh, FE diagram, compare at the joint, okay, compare at joints and form relationship between P and F and form the A matrix. And then A transpose. Okay, A transpose. Then element stiffness matrix. Uh, in continuous beam also, if you have two members, you'll have four by four matrix. In three members, you'll have six by six. Similarly, here we have three members, so six by six matrix. The matrix terms uh, component will be 4e i1 by l1, 2e i1 by l1, 2e i1 by l1, 4e i1 by l1. So i i for column may vary, height of column may vary. So we can substitute the moment of inertia of the column. Similarly, what is the length? Similarly, for the beam, what is the moment of inertia? What is the length? So you can substitute everything. And you can take e as common term. You can take e as common term so that the matrix inside will be uh, in the form of say 1.5, 0.51. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, say 0, 0, 0.51. Likewise, you may be getting the uh, element stiffness matrix as a whole number matrix. Okay. So once we get the element stiffness matrix, then what is the next step in beams? What is the next step in beams? It's structural stiffness matrix. Yes, structural stiffness matrix. What is the formula? Capital K equal to? A into small k into? A transpose. Very good. So uh, we have small k in the previous step. A transpose already formed. A we have. So first find K transpose. Multiply, 3 multiply by A. You will be getting a structural stiffness matrix for the portal frame. So once you have a capital K, find K inverse. Find K inverse. Okay. So K inverse you can find it. Then to form capital P, to form capital P, we need to find the fixer and moments. So in case of a, a portal frame, in case of portal frame, say in column we have dota of any load here. Similarly, in this column we don't have any load. Only in the beam we have UDL. So find fixer and moments. So fixer and moment at left hand will be minus WL squared by 12. Fixer and moment at right hand will be plus WL squared by 12. 
So once you have the fixer and moment, mark the fixer and moment. Okay, mark the fixer and moment. So I'll show you how to mark the fixer and moment. Say uh, here uh, you may be getting fixed amount as zero. Here I'll be getting fixed amount as zero. Uh, here say I may be getting uh, minus twenty four. For example, I'm writing. Okay. Here I am getting plus twenty four. So using the formula for fixed moment, so here zero, here zero. Okay, then draw the P diagram. Draw the in from the PX diagram. Draw the P diagram. So here I'll be having P one. Here I'll be having P two. Okay. So can you tell me what will be the value of P1? What will be the value of P1? What is the rule to form P1? It is minus of sum of fixed and moment. Therefore, P1 will be equal to minus of minus of minus of fixed and moment. The fixed and moment at this joint, the corresponding joint is zero minus twenty-four. So zero minus twenty-four. Okay. So zero minus twenty-four which will be equal to what's the value? Minus minus will become plus twenty-four. Therefore, P one will be twenty-four. And how about P two? P two will be equal to minus of. It will be equal to minus of sum of fixed moment at this joint. At this joint, sum of fixed moment is twenty-four plus zero. Okay, twenty-four plus zero. So that will be equal to minus twenty-four. That will be equal to minus twenty-four. So P one, P two, we we need to find using the fixed moments like this. Okay. So there is no difference. Okay. So this is how we should form the P matrix. Once P matrix is formed, then uh, X matrix, capital X, capital X is equal to K inverse into P. K inverse into P. So K inverse will be having P matrix will have now. Therefore, X can be formed. Then F, F matrix equal to K A transpose into X. K A transpose already you have uh, in the structure sequence matrix. Use that value. Multiply by X, you'll be getting F. So here in this portal frame example, you'll be getting six values. F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6. Okay. Then a uh, final moments, final end moments. M A B equal to M F A B plus F1. M B A equal to M F B A plus F2. M B C equal to M F B C plus F3. M C B equal to M F C B plus F4. M C D equal to M F C B C D plus F5. And M D C equal to M F D C plus F6. So if you add all the F1, F2, F3, F6, you will be getting the final end moments. Then plot the B M D. That's all. Okay. Plot the B M D. Mark the values and plot the PMD. Say, for example, if I get 24 kilonewton meter here, okay, and then if I get uh, 48 kilonewton uh, meter uh, moment as end moment here, here I will be getting minus 48. Okay, so we should tell teach our students how to plot this uh, Benny Wood diagram in case of portal. Okay, so this is 48. This is forty-eight. Here minus forty-eight. Okay. Here minus twenty-four. So we need to first plot the end moments. So how to plot the end moments? So draw the portal frame. Okay. So here twenty-four. So apply a clockwise moment here. Apply a clockwise moment here and see whether the column will be pushed inside or outside. So where it will go, column? Inside, sir. Uh, it will go inside. So mark twenty-four. Here we have forty-eight. So apply a clockwise moment here. So it will go outside. So connect these two. Okay. 
okay then here minus 48 apply an anti clockwise moment and see whether the beam will be pushed up or down so it will push up so for mark 48 here because these two are same so intensity is same the magnitude same so draw is say equal amount then here plus 48 so apply a clockwise moment so the beam will be pushed up okay then connect these two then come to this column we have minus 48 apply an anti clockwise moment so it will move here then minus 24 apply apply again an anti clockwise moment and see where the column will be going. so column will go inside so connect these two then in that beam you have udl or point load so draw the free bmb okay draw the free bmb so you'll be getting the net value so this is how we should draw the anyone so for portal frame <coughs> analysis also we are using the same steps as we have used for the continuous beam analysis okay so for portal frame also we can very easily uh, do we can very easily do with the help of this matrix method okay so do you have any doubt in portal frame will you be able to do or will you be able to teach your students how to solve a portal frame example we can try actually we can try uh, problems which we have done by my moment distribution method you can take that problem and you can try with uh, we can ask the students to try with the matrix displacement method so they can compare the values okay so that will they will get confidence over the method so this method is a uh, step-by-step -step procedure and follows the same steps therefore we can't we will not forget any time anytime if you are asked to uh, teach or we can teach so that is that's how we should teach our students. The method which we teach should not be, they should not forget any time. Okay. Similarly, it should be able to apply for all. It should be generalized thing. Say if I should not say I should I will be able to solve only uh, continuous beam problem by matrix displacement method. I can't solve a portal frame. Like that is not say because steps are common. So how to apply the steps here? That's what that is the difference. Okay. Now we will go to say uh, continuous beams with settlement of supports. I have been telling. So I'll tell you what's the difference in settlement of supports. It's getting loaded. We have various examples in this. Uh, I'm searching for beams with settlement. You can see this bottle frame which I explained now, okay, so that you can recall. Uh, change the view percentage so that it will be clear. So, are you able to view? Do you see the diagram? Anyone yes, please sir. respond? Hmm? 
Are you able to see the portal frame? Yes, sir. Okay. So, this is what I have been explaining. So, to draw the uh, PX diagram, say C. This is the PX diagram at the B, P1, X1, at C, P2, X2. Here, F1, F1, E1, F2, E2, F3, E3, F4, E4, F5, F6, E6. Okay. Then comparing at B, P1 equal to F2 plus F3. At C, P2 equal to F5, F4 plus F5. Okay. And we are expanding, expanding the terms like this. P1 equal to F1 into 0 plus F2 into 1 plus F3 into 1 plus F4 into 0 plus F5 into 0 plus F6 into 0. Similarly, P2 equal to F4 into 0 up to F3, 0, F4 into 1, F5 into 1, F6 into 0. Therefore, you'll be getting A matrix. Okay. So once you get A matrix, A transpose 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. So similar, all the steps are similar to see this is the element stiffness matrix. Say 4E I1 by L1, 2E I1 by L1, 2E I1 by L1, 4E I1 by L1. Okay. So 4E I2 by L2, 2E I2 by L2, likewise, and then 4E I3 by L3, 2E I3 by L3, etc. So substitute I values. So you'll be getting E take E as common value so that you'll be getting the See, though it may look to big, bigger matrix, say if you find a capital K, it will be a two by two matrix. Say this is a six by six matrix, but if you find a capital K, you will see how to form structure sickness matrix, we need to form K transpose. So this is K transpose. So K transpose will reduce to, to this size. And then A, if you multiply by A, A into K transpose, capital K will become like this. A to A to 2.66, 0 0.67, 0 0.67, 2 0.6. This is the capital K matrix, structure stiffness matrix. Then K inverse. You know how to find the K inverse of 2 by 2 matrix. Very easy. So 1 by determinant of adjoint K. 1 by A, 1 by determinant of adjoint K. So you can find this. Then P. As I said, find the fixer and moments. Okay, fixer and moments will be minus W L squared by 12. Then find P equal to minus of sum of fixer and moment. Okay, minus of sum of Fixer and moment. Okay. So you'll be getting P equal to minus sigma sigma FEM. So P1 equal to minus or minus 1 to 72. P2 equal to minus 1 to that will be getting 72 minus. Then capital X, K inverse into P. So K inverse we have found P we have. Therefore, you'll be getting capital X. So then F, F equal to K transpose to X. K transpose we already have, X matrix now we have, E, e will get cancelled. Therefore, we will be getting F value. Please see how many F values you are getting. We will be getting F6 values will be getting. Because this we have F1 to F6. Therefore, we will be getting 6 values. Then final end moments, please see. M of AB plus F1, M of uh, BA plus F2, M of BC plus F3, M of CB plus F4, M of uh, CD plus F5, M of DC plus F6. So the moments will get uh, balanced at the time. Say if you take 24 at A, 48 and minus 48 at B, then uh, 48 and minus 48 at C, then at D you have minus 24. So then draw the 21 diagram. Okay. So this will be the minimum diagram of the portal frame. Okay. So, do you have any doubt in this portal frame? I want to show you how to calculate fixed amount due to sinking. After this, I will start uh, trust analysis. Okay, so soon we will start trust analysis.
so fixed number due to sinking is nothing but first to find fixed number due to load okay we know how to find it. then fixed number due to sinking is plus or minus 6 ea delta by l square that's all plus or minus 6 ea delta by l square you need to substitute appropriate i value okay i value and l value then you will be getting fixed number due to sinking and plus sign we will need to use when settlement is to the left side minus sign when settlement is to the right side same comments uh, we are as we have discussed in the uh, last class okay so you will be getting uh, fixed amount due to sinking so add these two find the fixed amount due to load applied load add fixed amount due to sinking and have the total fixed amount or final fixed amount use that to form the p matrix that is the only difference in case of sinking of supports okay so in case of sinking of support there is only one the difference is only in the, the form formation of uh, capital p matrix so in the capital p matrix normally we use fixed amounts alone now fixed amounts due to load fixed amount due to sinking they have to be combined to get the value of the fixed the final fixed and moments compare that to get the p matrix that is the only difference in so in matrix method uh, we have covered analysis of continuous beams fully okay analysis of continuous beam fully in the morning we have seen uh, two examples of continuous beam similarly a continuous beam with the overhang how to handle uh, overhang now we have seen how to handle over uh, continuous beams with sinking of supports and then we have seen how to apply this uh, matrix displacement method to a portal frame and we have seen the portal frame analysis also okay next we will switch over to process okay so uh, before that do you have any doubt in this in beams or frames please tell me do you have any doubt no sir okay Shall we proceed further? Yes, sir. So now we will take a, a truss analysis. Okay, we will take a truss analysis. The pin jointed truss. If we are going to use the same method, matrix displacement method. Okay, they let us have a, a pin jointed truss like this. Say uh, this joint is uh, pinned. Similarly, here we have a pin. Similarly, here we have a pin. Okay. Say let it be subject to a load, a downward load here. Okay. Say let this be A. Joint A, and this be joint B, and this is joint C. Okay. Actually, this is support. So there are only two members. There are only two members. Yeah, A, B, and ac okay so in the truss in the truss also the first step is to form the static matrix okay to form the static matrix to form the static matrix we need to first we need to draw the px diagram here also we need to draw the px diagram <coughs> okay here p stands for <coughs> okay here p stands for Tell you what is P. Okay. In case of trusses, P stands for external joint force. That will P is okay. External joint force, and X stands for X. X stands for action giant rota uh, displacement and rotation here. That is the only difference. Okay, P is the action giant force and X is the action giant displacement. Okay. So. Here we should mark the PX diagram. Please, I tell you the steps how to form the PX diagram. Okay, so 
say if you take joint a take joint a the joint a is uh, free to undergo displacement in the x direction okay as well in the y direction it can undergo okay joint a is free to undergo displacement along x axis as well along y axis okay and if you take this this joint it will not have any uh, movement because it is uh, fixed sorry it is uh, uh, fixed here okay fixed here similarly this joint is also fixed so it will not have any displacement so only joint a is free to have displacement along x axis and y axis that is this joint a can either move towards right or move towards left similarly they can move up or down so in general we mark the displacement like this okay it can have a horizontal displacement and this joint can have a vertical displacement okay in case if you have a truss like this in case we have a truss like this okay say i have a hinge support here i have a hinge support here and i have a roller support here so i have a roller support here okay so how the joint should undergo displacement tell me the displacement of this joint i want displacement of this joint so this joint can move either horizontally or vertically okay similarly this joint can move horizontally or vertically okay how about this uh, hinge support whether there is possibility of displacement here whether the hinge support will move horizontally or vertically so for this we need to know the type of reactions offered okay type of reactions offered a yeah, roller support can offer vertical reaction only a yeah, hinge support can offer horizontal and vertical reaction therefore a hinge support will not allow for horizontal or vertical movement whereas a roller support will allow for horizontal movement so these things we have studied in uh, engineering mechanics okay basic engineering mechanics we know we have studied about the types of supports and reactions that will help us now to identify the uh, possible uh, degree of displacement okay because that is essential to draw the px diagram in case of trusses so that's why we are studying the uh, basics of uh, mechanics okay so here this joint will not have any displacement whereas the roller support uh, can have uh, can move horizontally okay so this joint can move horizontally and vertically this joint can move horizontally and vertically this joint can move only horizontally when you take this example only joint a is free to move in the x direction and y direction okay similarly you may be having trusses like this you may be given trusses any truss you can do by matrix uh, displacement method say you may be having uh, trusses of this configuration okay this is one uh, hinge support this is fixed support this is a uh, fixed support okay and here we have a fixed support there are four members so here here again uh, say this is being hinge support it can't it would not allow for any uh, displacement fixed support won't allow for any displacement this is hinge support won't allow for any displacement. this is fixed support won't allow for any displacement only this joint only this joint is free to move either horizontally or vertically this basic uh, fundamental thing we need to teach to our students that is which joint uh, can undergo both displacements which joint can undergo any one displacement either horizontal or vertical this we need to teach them clearly before proceeding to analysis of trusses okay say if you have a tripod like thing have a truss like this okay say here i may having i may be have or i may have a hinge support here fixed support here i may have a roller support so here can you tell me uh, which joints will undergo displacement i will name the joints
Okay, can you tell me which joint will undergo what type of displacement? Yeah, the response is that the interactive ability is not a full solitary. Okay, the C can move either vertically or horizontally. Horizontal, sir. Okay. C can move only horizontally. So there will be horizontal displacement only here. Whereas D can have horizontal and vertical. Very good. So it can have horizontal as well, vertical displacement. Okay. So this we need to identify in case of any problem. How what will be the displacement? Okay. That is the first step. We need to identify the uh, possible displacement in a uh, pin jointed truss. Okay, pin jointed truss. So let us take uh, the uh, first example which I have uh, already taken. That is, I will take this example so that it will be easier. Okay. So here, which joint can undergo displacement? Uh, we discussed this is one joint, and this is one uh, pin joint, and this is one pin joint. Okay, let me call this as A. This is B. This is C. So these are fixed. So they will not undergo any displacement. Only A can have horizontal displacement and vertical displacement. Okay. So this this knowledge is more essential to draw the PX diagram. I'll tell you we are going to draw the PX diagram. I'll tell you how to draw the PX diagram. Okay. This you please uh, name it as P1 X1. P1 X1. This you name it as P2 X2. Okay. So likewise, we need to name. Say we I have shown you several examples. So, in some example, you may be getting P1, X1, P2, X2, P3, X3. In some examples, you may get P1, X1, P2, X2, P3, X3, P4, X4, P5, X5. Okay. So, that depends on the type of the truss. Okay. Type of the truss and the joint. If the joint is free to move along the X or Y axis, I will be having uh, two components. Okay. Horizontal displacement as well vertical displacement. If I have hinge support, I will not have any displacement. If I have a roller support, perpendicular to roller it can't move parallel to the roller there will be displacement so mark the displacement and mark name them as p1 x1 p2 x2 so p1 is external joint force p2 is that is external joint horizontal force p2 is external joint vertical force here and then x1 uh, external joint horizontal displacement x2 external joint vertical displacement okay that is called px diagram. How do we draw this PX diagram in case of beams and portal frames? In case of beams and portal frames, we left the fixed support. Okay, all uh, supports, all supports other than fixed support will have freedom for rotation. Okay, all supports other than fixed support will have freedom for rotation. So we left the fixed support and we mark P1, X1, uh, P2, X2, P3, X3, etc. All other supports. Okay. So here, this is the procedure. In case of trusses, to draw the PX diagram, this is the procedure. Okay. Then we need to draw the FE diagram. Okay. So compare the uh, uh, method we study for uh, beams. That will help here to a larger extent. So this is fixed. This is fixed. Okay. There we told all members. All members will have internal joint moment and rotation at their ends. Here. All members will have internal joint forces. Okay, all members will have internal joint forces. So this member, say this member, I will assume tensile, the forces tensile. Okay. So this I will name it as F1 E1. F1 E1. This I will assume as tensile force. Okay. And I will call this as F2, 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 E2, okay, F2, E2, 
okay only two internal forces so this is the fe diagram this is the fe fe diagram okay now we need to establish the relationship between uh, p1 p2 f1 f2 etc okay in case of continuous beams and in case of portal frames, how did we form the A matrix? Do you remember? How did we form the A matrix? Just by comparing, by considering the static equilibrium of uh, the joints. Okay, external joint moment should be equal to internal joint moment. Here, how we are going to find the relationship that is more important. Okay, so here, how we are going to form the relationship between P1 f1 f2 etc similarly p2 f1 f2 etc okay that is more important so here our knowledge on method of joints will be helpful okay the knowledge on method of joints which we have studied for analysis of process will be much helpful here okay so if i take say if i take uh, what i will be doing to form the a matrix is say i tell you Uh, here I have formed. Now oh, I am combining both P PX diagram and AP diagram. Okay, so that I can form the relationship between these. Even X one also not required. Just you can mark P one, P two. It's enough. But uh, okay, and this is. I am assuming tensile. As we assume all clockwise moments in the case of beams and portal frames, here we assume everything as tensile because they, we deal with forces here. Here, this is F1. Even F1 is enough, not even also not required. And then similarly, this is F2. Okay. So you can also uh, leave X1, X2. So it's not required. Okay. So write P1, P2, similarly F1, F2. Okay. So uh, we can easily find the angle made by this. Okay. How can you find this angle? Any idea? How can you find this angle? Say if I know the height of the truss. If I know the height of the truss. Say if this is Y. And if this is x this is x okay this is x what is tan theta what is tan theta y by x okay tan theta equal to y by x okay so y distance will be knowing for the truss x distance will be knowing for the truss so, so we can find the angle okay then as I said, the knowledge on uh, trusses, the method of joint should be helpful here. So first we need to use sigma h equal to zero. Okay, using sigma h equal to zero, what will happen? What do you mean by sigma h is sum of horizontal forces equal to zero. So what are the horizontal forces? Towards right positive. You can assume towards right as positive. So uh, can you tell me the equation using sigma h equal to zero? Please tell me. Using sigma h equal to zero towards right positive, I'll be getting p1 because p1 is acting to the right. Okay, p1 and f1 is acting towards left. So minus f1. Okay, then I can resolve this inclined force f2. So f2 when resolved, it will go towards left. Therefore, minus f2. Okay, cos theta equal to zero. Equal to zero. Okay, do you understand? P1 is moving towards right, so right is positive, therefore plus. Then F1 is moving towards left, so minus F1. Then we have a inclined force, F2. So this F2 can be resolved horizontally. We'll be getting F2 cos theta. And when you resolve horizontally, it will move towards left. So that will be minus F2 cos theta equal to zero. Therefore, you can easily write it. P1 equal to 
f1 p1 equal to f1 plus f2 cos theta okay so theta value if you know you will be getting p1 equal to f1 plus 0 0.8 f2 likewise you will be getting okay so you will be getting p1 equal to uh, f1 minus or plus okay for, uh, plus plus 0 0.6 f2 likewise you will be getting relationship between p1 and f1 f2 similarly if you use sigma v equal to 0 please if you use sigma v equal to 0 what will happen p2 p2 is vertical so p2 equal to p2 or p2 upward positive then this f2 can be resolved vertically so minus f2 sin theta equal to 0 therefore p2 equal to f2 sin theta will be getting p2 equal to f2 sin theta sin theta may be say 0.8 you may get so 0.8 f2 so this type of relationship will be getting in case of a truss okay in case of a truss you will be getting p1 equal to uh, this much f1 plus this much f2 Similarly, p2 equal to this much f1 plus this much f2. So, once you get a relationship between p and f, this can be expressed in a uh, retired in matrix form. So, how, did, how can you write in matrix form? I can write p1, p2 on left side equal to the coefficient for f1 is 1, coefficient of f2 is 0.6. So, 1.6, 1, then space 0.6. Then for p2, I have uh, no f1 component, therefore 0, and f2 component is 0.8, so 0 0.8. Multiply by f1, f2. So this is how I can write it in, in matrix form. In matrix form, left side I will be having p matrix, right side I will be having sub matrix uh, with the coefficients and f matrix. So p equal to af or p equal to af. So if we can get the value of a matrix. So that a matrix is called static matrix. So to get the static matrix in process, we need to do this uh, small uh, computations. Okay, based on the matrix, uh, the, based on the uh, method of joints, we are obtaining the relationship between internal joint force, uh, sorry, external joint force and internal joint force components. Okay, this thing is required for press analysis. This is the additional thing which we are doing in the case of trusses. Okay, whereas in case of beams and frames, that's why we started with the beams and frames so that we can, by comparing, we will not forget the steps. Okay, by comparing, there, how did we do? Uh, we simply draw, we have drawn the Px diagram, we have drawn the Fe diagram. By simply comparing, we got the P1 equal to F2 plus F3, uh, P2 equal to F4 plus F3, like we, we directly got that. But here in case of trusses, we need to resolve and find the relationship between uh, external uh, moment, external joint moment and internal joint moment, or external joint force and internal joint force. That way you get the A matrix. So once you get A matrix, the next step is to form A transpose. So A transpose is easy. We know how to form A transpose. Then step three. What is step three in uh, on a beams and frames? What is step three in beams and frames? Element shiftless matrix. Very good. So here also element shiftless matrix. Small k, small k equal to, okay. So uh, a one, a one, e one divided by l one. A one divided by e one divided by l one. This will be the uh, value for single number. A one capital. Please use capital letters. A one e one by l one. A one e n modulus. E1 divided by L1 will be the uh, stiffness matrix for one single member. Okay, one single member. So, how why do you get AE? Because why do you get AE is there in case of beams and frames, we got 4 EA by L, 2 EA by L, 2 EA by L, 4 EA by L, equation. Like so, there EA is the fluctual rigidity. In case of trusses, AE is the fluctual rigidity. Okay? In case of trusses, AE is the fluctual rigidity divided by L1. Similarly, for member 2, A2, E2 by L2, for member 3, A3, E3 by L3. So, how many numbers you have, that, that will be the size of your small k matrix. Okay, that will be the size of your small k matrix. So, you may be getting uh, 2 by 2 matrix, 3 by 3 matrix. If you have 2 members, you will be getting 2 by 2 matrix. If you have 3 members, 3 by 3 matrix. But in case of uh, beams, uh, for a single member, 
we have two by two. For two numbers, four by four. Here, for each each number will be having only one value. A1, A1 by L1. For other number, A2 to L2. Other terms are zero. So you can form the element stiffness matrix like that. Okay. Then step four, structure stiffness matrix is same formula. Uh, A K A transpose. So A K A transpose. So A A matrix you all have in the first step. Small k we have we have formed now the element stiffness matrix. Then A transpose we have the step two. So capital K you will be getting. Okay, capital K. So just to compare with the steps which we studied in uh, continuous means, there also we started with the A matrix, A transpose, element stiffness matrix, structure stiffness matrix. Here also same. Only thing is we have slight uh, variations in forming the stiffness terms, uh, A matrix, etc. Okay. So capital K equal to A K A transpose. Capital K equal to A K A transpose. Then K inverse. K inverse again same thing. We know how to find inverse of a matrix of whether it is two by two or three by three, etc. Okay, two by two, three by three. We can find inverse. Uh, okay. Then uh, P matrix. So P matrix we formed in the case of uh, continuous beams and portal frames by finding the fixed and moments due to applied load, and we have found the uh, minus of summation of fixed and moment at any joint. Here there is no point of fixed and moments. Okay, so here it will be very easier to form the P matrix. I'll tell you how to form the P, P matrix. Let's see how to form the P matrix. The same problem. So here is a fixed support. Here again a fixed support. Here we have a load. So load is given as, say for example, it may be given as uh, 50 kilometers. 50. 50 kilometers is a given load. Okay. given load okay um, but we have marked it we have marked p1 like this okay and we have marked p2 like this okay. so we can write it matrix p matrix p equal to at P equal to P1, P1, P2, okay, which is equal to P1 represents horizontal force. We don't have any horizontal force in the given truss, therefore, P1 is 0. P2 represents vertical force. So in the given problem, we have a downward vertical load of 50 kilometers. Therefore, we need to write minus 50. So very easier here. The formation of P is very easier. So 0 and minus 50. Okay. Suppose in the truss, suppose in the truss, if you are given the horizontal load of 10 kilonewton. Okay, and a yeah, vertical load of uh, 15 kilonewton. 15 kilonewton. So in this case, in this case, your P1, P2 will be P1. So P1 will be equal to 10 kilonewton because towards right, towards right is positive. If you, if you are given a load towards left, then minus. So P1 equal to 10 kilonewton. P2 equal to minus 15 kilonewton. So, like us, we can form the P matrix. So, matrix P can be formed like this. So, do you have any doubt in this case of process how to form the P matrix? So, everything. Sir, sir load value put on the P1, P2, whatever the notation. Ah, uh, P1 on the horizontal P1 assume. Okay. So, load is the horizontal load put on the upgrade. Vertical load put down, I upward load put up, plus down load put up, minus it. Okay, sir. Okay. 
Do you have any any other doubt in forming the sign? Sign on the every how we need to uh, assign is it depends on the direction of the given load. If the given load is horizontal load is towards right positive. If the given load is towards left negative. If the given load is downward negative. If the given applied load is upward positive. So this is the sign convention for loading. Why I am saying plus minus because initially I am I have assumed a P1 towards right and P2 towards upward. Therefore, if the load is in the other way, then I need to have take minus one. That is the logic. Okay. If load is in the same direction, I will take plus. If load is in the opposite direction, I will take minus. That's the difference. Okay. So, what are the steps we have studied so far? Pluses form static matrix, A transpose, element stiffness matrix, capital K, structure stiffness matrix, K inverse. Now we have formed P. So, once you have formed P, we can find uh, X. Capital X is equal to K inverse into P. So, K inverse is known, P is known. So, we can find X. Then we can find F. F is equal to K transpose into X. So K transpose we already have. Okay, K transpose we already have. X we have obtained. So we can find F matrix. So with that it's over. We need, we need not find a final element on because F dress is actually part of it. We, know, we need only the force in the numbers. So you, you have only if you find this F, F matrix, you find the F matrix, that is with that it is enough. So you will be getting uh, if you have two numbers, you will be getting two values. We're getting two values of course okay so we are getting f1 f2 so if you get f1 as positive it indicates uh, tensile if you get negative it indicates numbers because why again the sign convention we'll be getting two values so if you, if you get positive value it will indicate tensile negative means it is compressive why the reason is can anyone tell me the reason why tension positive compression negative வெரிஃபியூ <laughs> very few response i am very sorry to say this okay since i am putting all my efforts uh, i should get some benefit out of it benefit in the sense your response will be a great uh, booster to be uh, if your response is very very less uh, what uh, see many participants are ladies here i think you can respond well right so the responses all we are getting are from the uh, uh, male faculty members right usually ladies would be more sincere hmm. so we have lay a lot of lady participants here hmm. but no one is responding okay ma'am so why why you uh, we use plus for tension minus for compression how so we always say if i get plus means uh, tensile minus means compression the reason is initially if you take uh, in the uh, px diagram the fe diagram initially i told we will i will assume all as tensile okay i'll assume all numbers as tensile forces okay so i'll assume uh, f1 e1 as tension okay f1 e1 as tension similarly f2 e2 as tensile okay f2 as tensile so since i assume initially all as tensile finally if i get the minus means then my assumption is wrong therefore it's not true so that is the reason why in the final result if i get uh, plus means tension and minus means compression so this is how we should analyze here press okay so i think can we can have a break for 10 minutes and then we can continue okay madam yes sir we can have some breaks sir yes sir okay 
so we can uh, i mean rejoin at 315 sir ah okay yes. dr satya madam are you there for the photo session yes ma'am yes, Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir.